Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and this is probably going to be one of the most ridiculous and useless videos in the booktube community. Uh, basically, this is going to be my TBR for what is left of the month of May. I know there's only like eight or nine days left, and probably by the time I edit, upload, all that good stuff, it's going to be less than that, uh, I'm assuming. So yeah it's still gonna be my may tbr uh basically it's gonna just be for the last like like i said eight or nine days a week or so uh, whatever it happens to be by the time i get this going and everything um but i'm definitely a completionist i'm just gonna feel weird just skipping over may and doing my having my april tbr and like a june tbr uh for whatever reason i can i know that's just gonna eat up my soul basically for all time if i don't do it so this is going to be a really short video with only like three or four books on the TBR. Um, I definitely finished some other books and works earlier in the month. And I'll include those in my monthly wrap up for the month of May. But I'm not going to include them here just because it's kind of weird calling them putting them in my to be read <laughs> video if I've already like read them or listened to them or anything. So that's kind of silly. But uh, yeah, we're just going to go with like the three or four books that I want to finish. Um, either finish or uh, start and finish uh, during this like last like week and a half or so of the month of May. Uh, so let's just uh, get started. Kind of my general-ish game plan for May was to read several NetGalley books uh, from my backlog of NetGalley books that I've sort of accrued on my Kindle. And the first one here uh, for this TBR is Wild at Heart by Alice Outwater and the subtitle is America's Turbulent Relationship with Nature from exploitation to redemption. And I have not reached the redemption part of the book yet, uh, that's for sure. Um, the exploitation and negligence um, is definitely a, uh, a dominant theme of the work. Um, and obviously dealing uh, with the subtitle, America is kind of the focus, but sort of the West in general and the global population as a whole is definitely included uh, in all of this. Uh, but what I found interesting about this book is each chapter deals with a different facet of um, human populations kind of from the early modern age to the present are, or at least for the most part, uh, sort of our use of nature or relationship with nature, but not just the use of natural resources, like uh, obviously like plants and animals and um, other natural resources. That's obviously a big part of the book, but there are also many other sort of tan tangential, I think it's the right word, um, aspects of our relationship as well. For example, there's a chapter on uh, basically our medicinal use of nature. Uh, there's chapters on like our spiritual, emotional well-being of being in nature, things like that. So it's not all necessarily gloom and doom per se, and it's the whole spectrum of how humans interact um, with nature as a whole. So I think that is um, really interesting to look at it. It's not just not coming just from the natural resource perspective, uh, which does get done a lot and for a uh, good reason. And like I said, that definitely is included in the book. Um, but I've learned tons of stuff from uh, different vignettes and everything. Um, I found it uh, sort of just really interesting, lots of different ways of looking at things. Uh, for example, like during a focus uh, where she was describing sort of the Industrial Revolution in England, um, pretty much people's, uh, I don't know, sorry, transference from um, basically different economic outputs and stuff from kind of the earlier village uh, village life and then kind of like the small kind of home businesses and everything going into the industrial revolution and stuff and how people's lives actually got worse because of everything and a lot of the sort of um uh instances that nature came into play during stuff like that i found found things like that uh, very interesting then there's um, a section on why cemeteries like garden cemeteries and regular cemeteries have basically become sort of the main uh, sort of graveyard for modern populations whereas before is largely just um, church graveyards things like that uh, but how garden cemeteries sort of uh, came about and I don't want to go into too much detail in this one but it was very interesting uh, learning about that stuff and like I said haven't got to the redemption spot so I assume towards the end of the book we're gonna have some good stuff on how we're trying to reverse uh, certain things that'll be always really good to read about uh, lift, lift the spirits a little bit after all the kind of kind of cringeworthy stuff we've basically done to the planet um, and nature as a whole so yeah there's wild at heart uh the next one that i need to finish 
is the second book in T.H. White's The Once and Future King, which in my edition is uh, titled The Queen of Air and Darkness. Not to com be confused with the modern YA book that's uh, coming either out or coming out or... Yeah, I think it's out. Uh, that's uh, pretty recent. <laughs> uh, but in other editions, it's also called The Witch in the Wood, um, if you've read it under that title. And T.H. White's The Once and Future King is... This is an omnibus of four books... Uh, dealing with the authors, it's uh, his Arthurian cycle, basically dealing with from the early childhood of Arthur to his uh, ascension as king, um, all the way down to his death and the Knights of the Round Table, everything. Uh, so I think that's really cool. I read the first book, which is The Sword in the Stone, and I absolutely just love sort of the wit and charm, the whimsicalness of it, um, dealing with sort of really serious themes, but in kind of a, like I said, a very witty and whimsical way just love the author's writing style um just like i said just highly enjoyable um encourage you guys to check it out if you like sort of either retellings or if you like arthurian stuff merlin stuff and like i said this omnibus edition that uh, tim gave me covers the first four books and um, there's also a fifth book that was posthumously published um after obviously after uh teach white uh, passed away um i think is the fifth book is the book of merlin uh, but anyways, like I said, I just really enjoy uh, author's writing style. Not like super hardcore Arthurian, uh, or, uh, or you know, I don't study like King Arthur or like actually go out looking for retellings of uh, King Arthur or the Knights of the Round Table. But I definitely am going to uh, read all of this author's works on um, Arthurian stuff just because, like I said, I just love his writing style. Um, just like I said, dealing with heavy themes, especially might is... Like, the whole concept of might is right, and whether that is actually true or not. Um, I think that's definitely a big push, um, sort of, with, uh, I don't want to say his purpose for writing it, uh, but sort of a definitely a central concept uh, and theme that is dealt with um, in the first book, as well as what I've read so far in the second book. And then, after, I, like I said, or not like I said, I think it was published originally in the 50s, I want to say, 50s or 60s. Which is, um, you know, if I can find the copyright page for some reason, I can't, I skipped over it. Um, oh yeah, 39, 40, and 58. Alright, so yeah, this is like during the era of like World War II and stuff. So obviously like the might is right thing um, for for both the Allies and Axis Pirates. Just kind of dealing with World War II and everything. The might is right, or is might right. Oh, uh, definitely uh, sort of... a very pertinent topic for the era. So yeah, I highly encourage you guys to check that out if you like Arthurian stuff, retellings, things like that. Give this book a try. All right, now for two books uh, that I haven't read. I didn't read a Horace Heresy book yet this month, and there's 54 books in the series, so uh, I gotta get on that. I think I've read five so far. Um, yeah, I'm about almost 10% of the way there. Uh, but I'm either going to read The Flight of the Eisenstein by James Swallow, The Heresy Unfolds, which is book number four. Um, and James Swallow was one of the was the first author in the Horse Heresy of a book that I read. So that's cool. Uh, but I might actually read number 53, which is Titan Death. And I think the subtitle is God Machines Cometh, which has got to be one of the best subtitles uh, of a book that I've ever read. Uh, and... The reason I can do that is um, these books, especially after you read the first sort of tr three book trilogy art, you can kind of skip around. Because um, generally people who, re like once you start reading, you kind of know the gist of what happens in the end, uh, since it's a prequel to Warhammer 40k. So you already kind of know the big events that happen. Uh, and each um, each book is its own, um, what, what is its own story arc uh, so you could read like just any book and still get a full story without reading the other ones uh, but the reason i might read titan death is i was uh, a proof for a net galley copy of titan death so i might try to lower my uh tight or my uh, net galley queue a little bit by reading that one on my kindle as well so yeah i haven't decided which of these two i'm going to read uh but it's gonna be one of these two so yeah there's those and then lastly well, oh yes, there's an audiobook that I'd like to um, listen to, and it's The Beekeeper's Lament by Hannah... Hannah something. <laughs> no, 
can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but basically what this book is dealing with is um, in recent times, in the past, uh, what about since what, the early 2000s? I think it's happened before, but uh, this cycle of it has been really bad. There's a colony collapse disorder or colony collapse uh, for honeybees, in, uh, not just in the United States, but um, quite, uh, quite, what was the word I'm looking for? Uh, pretty much all over the world. I don't know why I was saying quite. Um, but anyways, colony collapse disorder is basically when a bunch of different minor causes, or at least from what I understand, will probably be discussed a lot more in the audiobook. Um, but basically, all these colonies of honeybees essentially just die off, and not for any particular cause uh, or direct cause. And the scientific community is still trying to sort of understand what is going on here. Uh, but essentially, you know, a quarter to a third of the entire population of honeybees in a particular area could die um, basically at any time over the course of the year, which is not good um, considering obviously we need honeybees to make honey and stuff. Uh, but honeybees are also used on a lot of other things, obviously as pollinators and stuff, but especially as pollinators for uh, big uh, commercial farming uh, industries. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones. I know like almond, I think like almond trees in California uh, need these like honeybee farms to come in and pollinate and stuff. And I think other, I don't know if other trees and other plants and stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of examples that are going to be in the book, but I know there are some industries that rely on these honeybees to basically be cost effective at pollinating all their plants. Considering, you know, if you have, I don't know, I'm just shooting a number. If you have like a 20,000 acre farming complex or something, there's no way you're gonna be able to cross pollinate by, by hand or even with machines and stuff that many um, individual plants by any other method than with, you know, the natural pollinators being bees and stuff. So anyways, I since it's called the Beekeeper's Lament, and I think I looked into it like when I first got it, like on an audible sale like a year ago, um, it deals a lot with sort of like how the honeybee industry has sort of been collapsing along with sort of this colony collapse disorder, obviously just because when the honeybees go, obviously the honey or the beef apiaris have to go kind of with them because if you don't have bees, you don't have really uh, beekeepers. So anyways, I thought this was just interesting. Uh, I saw a bunch of the bees were starting to come out and stuff a couple weeks ago and I thought, you know, I have a book on bees like that. I should just try to learn more about them. So that's why I'm going with The Beekeeper's Lament um, as an audiobook to round out the month of May, hopefully. <laughs> so there you guys have it. Those are four books. I'm going to try and either complete or finish in the next like week and a half or so. Tell me what you guys think about any of them. Tell me what your either your favorite book that you've read so far in the month of May was or the book you're most forward to starting next. Uh, leave some comments down below. I'd be glad to talk to you about them. If you have any comments about these ones, leave those as well. I love talking to you guys about books. And always remember, whatever you end up reading in the next like, eight or nine days, read victoriously.